Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking all about organic integrated pest management. Now, if you're looking for specifics on how to treat certain pests, we have lots of resources for you. I'll have a playlist linked for you right up here, as well as some additional resources in the description box. But today we're talking about integrated pest management. This involves the use of mechanical, biological, and cultural controls to help limit the need for chemical treatments. In order for us to establish this type of a protocol, we first need to understand why pests happen in the first place. Pests most often attack weak root systems, so seedlings or plants that are already compromised in some way. And a greenhouse creates a thriving pest population due to a lack of natural predators, higher humidity levels, and potential airflow issues. But all of these situations can be avoided using the methods that we're going to talk about today. The first step to integrated pest management is prevention. If we can prevent the pests in the first place, everything is a whole lot easier. The way that we do this is by starting our plants from seed. This way we can avoid introducing any diseases or pests that may be present at another nursery and bringing them into our greenhouse. Step number two is monitoring. So we wanna be looking at our plants every day on the bottom of the leaves, the top of the leaves, the stems. We wanna look at the soil, see if we notice any roly polies. That way we know what kind of pests that we're having to treat. And step number three is determining your action threshold. So how many pests need to be present for you to do something about it? Having a zero tolerance is not realistic. Pests are part of the natural ecosystem. So you as the gardener have to decide how many pests are tolerable for you and your plants. Our first control method is mechanical control. This involves physically removing the pests or preventing them from entering your greenhouse utilizing screens. Here we have a juvenile winged aphid and we are just gonna pluck her up and remove her from the greenhouse. If you can't physically pick the pests off of your plants, you can utilize a high pressure hose to help knock them off. This is best suited for mature plants or hardy plants like your fig tree, your mature tomato plants, things that can withstand the pressure of the hose. Other methods of mechanical control involve traps. So white fly sticky traps are a great example. These help with white flies and also the use of screens. So you can utilize a hardware cloth over the lower portion of your vent to help keep things like grasshoppers, mice, even larger mammals like raccoons out of your greenhouse. We also utilize screen doors for the same reasons. They do not impede airflow, but they help to keep the things that we don't want in our greenhouse outside. We also have a rodent protection option that you can lay underneath your entire greenhouse to help prevent burrowing animals like voles. The second control method is biological control. This utilizes nature to our advantage by using things like beneficial insects, beneficial pathogens, and predatory plants. When it comes to beneficial insects, we most often see people using ladybugs or lacewings. The issue with ladybugs and lacewings is that they fly, and we found that winged insects don't tend to stick around very long. With any type of beneficial insect, it's the second generation that's going to make the most benefit to your garden because the first generation will mate and lay eggs, and the second generation will hatch and turn into teenagers who are very hungry. We are utilizing praying mantids in our greenhouses because they very rarely fly, meaning that they'll be easier to keep inside of the greenhouse. We'll just place that in our garden, and hopefully we'll have lots of little mantids here soon. Whenever you're using a biological control, you also wanna remember your mechanical controls. This is integrated pest management. So utilize things like screens to keep your beneficials in and the pests out. You'll wanna do this on your vents as well. Another biological control is beneficial pathogens. The main one that gardeners most often use is mycorrhiza. This creates a beneficial relationship between the fungus in the soil and the roots of our plants. The roots of our plants provide the fungus with carbon and sugars, and the fungus provides our plants with water and nutrients. By improving the root structures of our plants, we are making them less susceptible to diseases and more tolerant of pests. Predatory plants can also be used to your advantage. These are things like Venus flytraps and pitcher plants. Our third method is cultural controls. So this includes things like companion planting, trap crops, crop spacing, crop rotation, watering, ventilation, all the different ways that we as gardeners can manipulate the natural environment to deter pests. When it comes to crop spacing and rotation, we wanna make sure that we are consulting our seed packet so we know how large the plant is going to be at maturity. 
that way we're not overcrowding our garden and making it easy for pests to transfer from plant to plant. We also want to consider our crop rotation, so making sure we're not planting the same crops in the same location year after year, because that means that the pests are always gonna have their favorite food source. Companion planting is another great option, utilizing plants that benefit each other, such as a salsa garden. Your tomato is gonna provide shade to your peppers, your cilantro is going to deter white flies, your garlic and onions are going to deter spider mites. They all work together. And trap crops work in the opposite effect. They help to attract the pests to them and away from your more cash crops. So these are plants like nasturtiums and marigolds. Those are just our two favorites. We like to have those on a constant rotation. That way when one gets infested, we could just pull it out and plant a new one in its place. Another cultural control that we can employ is avid ventilation. As I mentioned in the beginning, greenhouses can suffer from poor airflow, which leads to pest problems. So by adding intake and exhaust fans, we're helping to circulate the air from outside. And we also want to add air circulation within the greenhouse. So utilizing an oscillating fan is a great option. We're also testing out some horizontal airflow fans that mount to the struts to help create that air movement within the greenhouse. Here's your pro tip. Adding ventilation is great, but if you don't properly prune your crops, all of that will be negligible. So we have tomatoes here that we have utilized stringers for, and we've really thinned out the bottom so that they can both focus on food production and we can increase the airflow within the space. Watering is the other way that we can manipulate our natural environment. So we wanna make sure that we're not overwatering, underwatering, or inconsistently watering because those can all lead to their own issues. We have a whole video about watering best practices, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail here, but you can check out the video right up here. Chemical controls are always our last resort. In this dome, we have a fungus gnat issue. We're utilizing sticky traps as our mechanical control. We have utilized a fertilizer that had mycorrhiza in it, so that's our biological control. And we have implemented added ventilation, and we're watching our moisture levels in our soil very closely, and that's our cultural control. So we are having to result to a chemical control to help control this population. We are going to be creating a solution today. Now when I say solution, I don't mean a chemical pesticide or herbicide or anything that you can buy from the store. We are trying to keep everything as organic as possible, which is the whole point of this video. So we are going to be making an apple cider vinegar, sugar, and dish soap solution that will help to attract the gnats into it where they will drown. So we're gonna put about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar per container. We're using a shallow container so that we can put these in the garden beds. The gnats lay their eggs in the soil, so we want to get them at the source. Got our vinegar. I'm gonna go in with a little sprinkle of sugar. This is what's really going to attract them. And then we're going to add a couple drops of dish soap. Since this is organic, I'm just using my finger. Integrated pest management is not one size fits all. There's no specific recipe or combination of methods that's going to yield you better or worse results. It really depends on your specific situation and your tolerance to pests as a gardener. We hope you found some helpful takeaways today to help you in your pest management process. Please like this video if you'd like to see more content like this from us and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.